Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fan company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do search in a rotated sorted array. And if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, LinkedIn, Bloomberg, Apple, TikTok, ByteDance, Google, Goldman Sachs, Uber, and eBay. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code medium problem and also a very well liked problem on lead code. Basically, we are trying to search an element inside a rotated sorted array. Now, if you notice, this is very similar to one of the previous videos we saw recently and you can check it out that over here. Now, uh, we are basically given uh, an array called nums and we are also given a target value and we need to check that whether this target value exists inside this nums array or not. If it does, we need to return the index of that target value. Now, the special part about this question is that the nums array we are given is actually a sorted array that has been rotated certain times. So it sounds confusing at first that what does a rotated sorted array means. So you can either read this definition that has been provided over here, but uh, let me make it a little bit clear for you. Uh, basically, a rotated sorted array is that initially an array is a fully sorted array, which is the case over here. You can see that all the elements are sorted and they are all in ascending order. And the thing is, whenever we rotate one time, basically we take the rightmost element, we put it on the leftmost side and then we flip all the elements one side or one position to the right. And that is how we rotate and uh, rotate a sorted array. So if we consider this to be the original array, suppose we rotate it one time, we will get a result that looks like this, where this five that was originally on the rightmost position came on the leftmost position and all the other subsequent value, we jumped it one step on the right side. If we rotate it two times, again, the four and five would come on the left side and all the values would be shifted two times on the right side. If we rotate three times, basically all the values would uh, be rotated three times and we would get an array that looks like this. So the idea is we are given a form of a rotated sorted array. The thing is, we don't know that how many times it has been rotated or whatnot. We are also given some target element and we need to see that whether this target element exists inside this array or not. So suppose uh, this is the array we are given as the input and we are given target is equal to uh, three. If that is the case, then in this case, three exists inside this array and its index value is zero. So we need to return zero as the answer. And this is what is being asked for this problem. So now let's see that what are going to be a couple of different approaches to solve this problem. The first approach we have is a brute force approach. In the brute force approach, what you can do is suppose this is the array we are given and we are given the target value to be zero. Well, if we see uh, what we simply do is we start iterating over this array uh, one by one and every single time we iterate until we find the L value that exists. If the target value exists inside this array, whatever its index position is, which is three in this case, we return that as the answer. Uh, and if we somehow reach to the end of this array and we do not find this target value, we simply return that, okay, the target does not exist, right? The thing is, this solution is not the most optimal solution. Why? Because the time complexity for this solution is going to be big O of N. Meanwhile, if we read the problem statement, we are explicitly told that we need to complete this in big O of log n time complexity. And this big O of n is ju just not good enough. Okay, before we come up with the optimal solution, first let's understand a couple of concepts regarding the sorted arrays, right? For the sorted arrays, uh, if we compare any left element with any right element, uh, if we end at any point identify that left is actually less than right and we know that this given array is a sorted array, right? And this left is actually less than uh, right. So if that is the case, all the elements between this left and right will be sorted in ascending order. That is one of the properties of a sorted array. We already know that. Now, uh, the tricky part we have is that the array we are given is actually rotated. So the thing is, we will have to take care of this rotated part as well. And we don't know that how many times it has been rotated. So suppose we are given an array like this. This has been rotated few times, right? Now, whenever we compare the left element with the right element initially, uh, we can clearly see in this case that left is actually three and right is actually two, which means left is actually greater than right. Uh, and remember, we already know that when left is less than right, we already know that all the elements in between, they are actually sorted. And if we are trying to find some target value that falls between this left value and this right value, we can immediately find that target value. Suppose we are given the target value to be three. We know that left value is zero and right value is five. 
so because of that this target value has to be somewhere between this 0 and 5 because it it can only exist between 0 and 5 because this portion is sorted 3 cannot be outside of the scope the thing is we cannot say that for certain in this case because over here currently if we see left is actually greater than right which means we can determine one thing that this whole portion is not sorted but the thing is we already know that a chunk of this portion is sorted which is this that 3 4 5 this is sorted in ascending order again same way this 0 1 2 that is also sorted in ascending order why because this was a rotated array right so the thing is what now we are going to do is we are trying to find some target value right so our aim is that suppose we are given the target value to be 4 right now we are trying to find the value 4 the thing is for this rotated array the idea we are going to use is that when we determine that left is actually greater than right which means that this whole portion is not sorted right that is the key part this whole portion is not sorted but some chunk of this portion has to be sorted and that we can determine by defining some middle value so in this case suppose we put down a middle value so suppose we have a middle value that is zero right now with this zero what we are going to do is we are actually going to compare this left with this middle value if we compare this left with this middle value left value is equal to three and, and middle value is equal to zero so if that is the case left is actually greater than middle value so since that is the case we are we won't be able to do much over here and uh, basically what we will do is now again we are going to compare this middle value with this right value so currently middle value is actually zero uh, the right value is actually two so middle value is actually less than right which means because this was the rotated array we can determine that all the values between this middle value and this right value is actually completely sorted this is the important property that we have to define that this whole portion is completely sorted because of that now we will see okay our target value is actually four uh, the current middle value is zero current right value is equal to two which means four does not fall between zero and two because it does not fall between zero and two we can concretely say that four cannot be part of this particular chain so immediately we can ignore all of these cases and now what we'll do is we will shift our right pointer to one step before mid why because we were certainly able to say that this sorted property of this rotated sorted array help us determine that four is not part of this one uh, all the elements between these portions were between zero and two now uh, we are going to move our right pointer over here so let me clean this up a bit so now currently our left pointer is here right pointer is here right now if we see left is equal to three right is equal to five if that is the case left is actually less than right and this is what the golden thing we wanted now we can clearly determine that this whole portion three four five that is completely sorted because this is completely sorted all we will have to do is just use binary search uh, in order to find the target value so what we are going to do is we are going to compare uh, the middle value so middle value in this case is four four is actually exactly the target value we are looking for so we will return the index position of four which is one in this case as the answer and the answer over here is going to be the one that we are going to return now after explaining this whole thing let me quickly go over one of the examples to see that how we will solve optimal solution using binary search okay so now as mentioned we are actually going to do the binary search operation on this rotated sorted array right and the target we are trying to find is the value number zero now now we are going to use our two pointers so first pointer we have is left that is located at this position number three and right pointer is located posi this position number two in this case currently left is actually greater than right which is not what we want so now we will have to determine that which portion of the array is sorted and based on that where this target uh, value could lie so we are going to compare with with the middle value so in this case the middle value is going to be seven right so now we have this value number seven that is located as the middle value okay now for this middle value we are going to compare it with left and right value so currently if we see left is actually less than middle value and this is what we wanted the moment we identify left is actually less than middle value we can clearly determine that this whole portion is completely sorted okay now we will compare the target value we are looking for with the values of left and mid so if we see the target value is actually outside the scope of this uh, left and mid which means that target value cannot exist between these places immediately we can determine that so we will ignore all of these cases and now we will have to update our left pointer to go on the right side of the middle pointer 
so we will do that so now we will have our left new left value the located at this position and the new right value located at this position now we are again trying to find the value zero okay now immediately over here we can see that left by itself is actually zero so that makes our life much more easier and we can simply return the index value of this left to be five as the answer and in this case we are going to return answer as the five and basically all we are doing is we are actually using the middle value to determine that which portion of the array is sorted depending on that and based on the target value we decide that which way we will have to make the jump and then we get our desired answer if we see time complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of log n only why because uh, remember in a single iteration we were able to get rid of all of these elements immediately which means every single iteration we are doing like half uh, we are getting rid of half of the elements so, so that is why the time complexity is log n and that is what we wanted if we see space complexity in this case the space complexity is actually going to be constant space because we are not using any any additional data structure so first of all we are going to define couple of variables left and right okay now we are going to initialize our while loop that while left is less than or equal to right and inside our loop first of all we are going to calculate the mid pointer now we are going to check for the condition that if the given value of mid if that is equal to target if that is the case we can simply return the index at mid okay if that is not the case now we will have to first of all define that which portion of the mid pointer is actually completely sorted so first let's put the condition that if the given value of left if that is less than or equal to whatever the value of mid is if that is the case we can define that the values between left and mid is completely sorted right so now all we will have to do is we will have to see that where target lies does it lies between left and mid value or it lies uh, somewhere else so first we are going to see that what if the target lies outside of left and mid value if target lies outside basically we will have to update our left pointer to go mid plus one and we will continue with our journey if that is not the case which means target lies between left and mid and if that is the case we will have to update our right pointer to come between left and mid so we will do right uh, equal to mid minus one okay now uh, we take care of the scenario that the numbers of left is not less than or equal to mid which means that the values between mid and uh, right is actually sorted and if that is the case again we are going to repeat the same process first we are going to check that whether the target value is outside the scope of mid value and right pointer so if the value is outside of the scope which means we will have to update our right pointer to search on the other portion of the array so right is going to become mid minus one and if that is not the case which means that the values lies between uh, mid and right value if that is the case we will update our left pointer to search between uh, mid and right so left would become mid plus one and basically this uh, loop should take care of the scenario and we would be able to find our answer and uh, just for the sake of uh, putting something outside so we don't get a compilation error we are going to return minus one but our answer would have been returned by this now let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions and uh, i would be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you